Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're doing the same video a second time and the reason is because I made a mistake somewhere. Sometimes you wonder why does he make a mistake for something as simple as that when he seems to know what he's talking about. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One of them is just simply not paying attention. My attention usually is drawn towards trying to explain what I'm doing and I don't actually pay attention to what I'm actually doing on the board. That's one of them. Secondly, sometimes I get a bit lazy and I skip a step. And when I skip that step, sometimes what I'm looking at doesn't look quite in the way that my brain can readily figure out the response from there. It's something I always tell my students, don't skip steps, and here I do it myself and sure enough, bites you right in the rear and causes a mistake. So we're going to do this one over again and I'm going to leave the, um, the uh, one with the mistake on the video so that you can see if you can find it. Some people have already found it and they've notified it, uh, notified us to make that uh, correction. And then was the second part, uh, some, some viewers asked, well, how do you know what the derivative of the sine and the cosine is? Because we just simply memorize that the derivative of the sine, y prime, is simply equal to the cosine of x. And the derivative of the cosine, y prime, is equal to the negative sine of x. Now you may ask, well, why is that? Well, we can actually figure that out the way we do it over here. We can use the concept of the limits again, like we did when we started learning how to take derivatives. And you take the original function, then you change it by just a small amount. We call that a delta x, a small change in x. We subtract the original function from that and divide by the change. By definition, in the limit, as delta x goes to zero, that gives us the slope or the derivative of that function. So what we do here is we have the sine of a sum of two angles. So we write that as a sine of x cosine delta x plus the cosine x sine of x minus the original function divided by the delta x. And then when we combine terms here, we can factor out a sine of x. We have the cosine of delta x minus 1 all over delta x. And here we end up with the cosine of x times the sine of delta x over delta x. Now most of us know that this fraction right here, the sine of delta x divided by delta x, as delta x goes to zero, that will equal one. Likewise, the cosine of delta x minus one divided by delta x as delta x goes to the limit to zero, that becomes one minus one or zero. It turns out that the cosine of delta x approaches one faster than the delta x approaches zero. And because of that, this then reduces to zero when we take the limit. Of course, this disappears and we end up with simply the cosine of x. So that's how we show how to go from the, uh, how we take the function, the sine of x, we take the derivative, we get the cosine of x. And of course, when we do it the other way around, we start with the cosine of x, use the same principle, we'll get the negative sine of x. So that's how we do those first two. What about the next four? Well, those, we're going to apply the rule of quotients because we can write the tangent of x as the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. And of course, the cotangent of x can be written as the cosine of x divided by the sine of x. So now we have a quotient, so we use the quotient rule. So here we take y prime is equal to the denominator, which is the cosine of x, times the derivative of the numerator, which is also the cosine of x minus the numerator, sine of x, times the derivative of the cosine of x, which is a minus sine of x, so be careful about the signs here, all divided by the denominator squared, which is the cosine square of x. So now when we write it as follows, we get the y prime is equal to, that becomes the cosine square of x, minus times a minus, that gives us the sine square of x, divided by the cosine square of x, and of course the numerator becomes one, 1 over the cosine square of x, and then 1 over the cosine is the secant, so 1 over the cosine square is the secant square of x. Secant square of x. And then we do exactly the same with the cotangent. We use the same principle. We can then say that y prime is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is a minus sine of x, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the denominator squared. 
And then we realize that here we have y prime is equal to, we can factor the negative one because this is a negative one, that's a negative one in sine. So we have negative one times, we end up with the sine square of x plus the cosine square of x because we factor out the negative one and we divide this by the sine square of x. And then you realize, well, this is equal to a 1 sine square of x plus a cosine square of x is equal to 1 times a negative 1, that's a negative 1, and 1 over the sine square of x is equal to the cosecant square. So we end up with the minus cosecant square of x. Remember that this equals 1, so negative 1 over that is the minus cosecant square of x. And finally, when we have the y equals the cosecant of x, we can write this as y is equal to, well, here we go, 1 is 1 over the sine of x. Let's write it over there. And then we want y prime. Again, we use the quotient rule, it's the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator. And that would be 0, because the derivative one is 0, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is a cosine of x, all divided by the denominator squared, sine squared of x. So we end up with y prime is equal to, notice here, the sine of x times 0, that's simply 0, 0, minus the cosine of x divided by the sine square of x. And here's where I made a little shortcut, which ended up, I got punished by it, because what we should do here is write it like this, minus the cosine of x over the sine of x times 1 over the sine of x. If you write it like that, then you realize that this is the cotangent of x and this is the cosecant of x. So this becomes, this is equal to minus the cosecant of x times the cotangent of x. So we can see that when y is equal to the cosecant of x, the derivative, y prime, is going to be equal to the negative cosecant of x times the cotangent of x. And then we do the same over here with the secant. We know that this is equal to 1 over the cosine of x. And then when we take the derivative, y prime, we take the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is 0, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, which is minus the sine of x, all divided by the denominator squared. This. And then you realize that this is 0, minus times the minus becomes plus, so y prime equals plus sine of x, over the cosine square of x, and here again, it's not a bad idea to put this step in there. So this, you write this as the sine of x divided by the cosine of x times 1 over the cosine of x. When you write it like this, you can see that this here is a tangent of x, and 1 over the cosine is equal to the secant of x. So this becomes equal to the secant of x times the tangent of x. And so very carefully, again, I think this is where I made the mistake. I think I called that the cosecant of x instead of the secant of x. So again, if you write it out, you don't skip the steps. You can quickly see that this is the tangent, and this here is the secant of x. And that is how it's done, correctly this time. You hope. I hope. <laughs>